Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. My name is Mama Aidil Branzali. Hi everyone, my name is Nur Adlin binti Nasaruddin from Group 1. Hi, my name is Shakira from Group 1. And today we want to present to all of you about our video entitled Wet of Virus. So let's watch the video together. Hello guys. So our topic today is virus. Virus began in 1884 when the French chemist Louis Pasteur suggested that something smaller than a bacterium was the cause of rabies. So he chose the word virus from the Latin word meaning poison. Uh, so in 1892, Dmitry Ivanovsky, a Russian microbiology, was studying tobacco mosaic disease which causes damage to the leaf and fruit tobacco plants. So he noticed that even when an effective extract was filtered through a fine pore porcelain filter that retained bacteria, the extract still caused disease. So this substantiated posture belief because it meant that the disease causing agent was smaller than any non bacterium. So next, we want to know when virus first discovery and detection. Virus were first discovered after the development of porcelain filter, the Chamberlain pasture filter that could remove all bacteria visible in a microscope from any liquid sample. In 1886, Adolf Meyer demonstrated that a disease of tobacco plants, tobacco mosaic disease, could be transferred from a diseased plant to a healthy one via liquid plant extract. In 1892, Dmitry Ivanovsky showed that this disease could be transmitted in this way even after the Chamberlain pasture filter had removed all vis visible bacteria from the extract. Most variants or single virus particles are very small, about 20 to 50 nanometers in diameter. However, some recently discovered virus from amoeba range up to 1000 nanometer in diameter with the exception of large variants like the pox virus and other large DNA virus. Virus cannot be seen with a light microscope. It was not until the development of the electron microscope in the late 1893s that scientists got their first good view of the structure of the tobacco mosaic virus. Next, we want to know about the evolution of virus. Although biologists have accumulated a significant amount of knowledge about how present-day virus evolve, much less is known about how virus originated in the first place when exploring the evolutionary, evolutionary history of most organisms, scientists can look at fossil records and similar history evidence. However, virus do not fossilize, so researchers can only hypothesize about virus evolutionary history by investigating how to this virus evolve and by using biochemical and genetic information to create speculative virus history. Lastly, as technology advances, scientists will develop and refine further hypotheses to explain the origin of viruses or create new hypotheses. The emerging field called virus molecular systematic atom to do just that through comparison of sequence genetic material. These researchers hope that to one day better understand the origin of viruses, a discovery that could lead to advice in the treatment of the ailment that they produce. So that's all about the history of virus. Wow, very interesting lesson from idea just now. So we will see the next video come from Shakira about the structure of the virus. Let's go. So this is the model, the 3D model of our group. So we st there are two parts of this virus is, which is inner core and also the covering. So we start first with the covering. The covering have glycoprotein spike and also the membrane envelope. The glycoprotein spike uh, play essential role in the virus attachment, fusion and entry into the host cells. Meanwhile, for the uh, very envelope, it the, is the outermost layer of many type of viruses protect the genetic material in the life cycle. So we continue with the inner core. So the inner core have protein code RNA and also the capsid. So the protein code, we have the purple uh, layer one, which uh, 
encoding their genes needed to build and replicate the virus inside the host. So the RNA one is the uh, is the orange one the uh, serve the traditional role as the blueprint for viral proteins. Meanwhile, well, for the capsid is the round, the colorful one is uh, protect the viral genome from environmental condition and ultimately to deliver the genome to the interior of a homologous host cell. So that's it for the model virus. So we can continue our discussion with the structure of virus. So for the uh, our 3D model uh, of virus, there are two parts of virus which are the covering and also the inner core. So we start first with the covering. The covering have glycoprotein spike and also the viral envelope. So the glycoprotein play essential role in viral virus attachment, fusion, and also the entry into the host cell. The phase location of the S glycoprotein renders it a direct target for host immune responses, making it the main target of neutralizing antibodies. So next is viral envelope. Where viral envelope is the uh, the outermost layer of main types of viruses is protect the genetic material in their life cycle when traveling between host cells, but not all viruses have envelope. So for the inner core, we start with RNA, RNA, RNA genome. RNA genome serves the traditional role as the blueprint for viral protein. However, they also contain his RNA element RE that direct different viral processes such as protein translation, genome replication, and transcription of subgenomic. So okay, uh, next is capsid. The primary function of the capsid is to protect the viral genome from environmental condition and ultimately to deliver the genomic to the interior of a homogeneous host cell. So next is um, protein code. A protein code called a capsid constitutes their surface which uh, houses the viral genome which encoding the gene genes need to build and replicate the virus inside its Without a host cell, viruses cannot carry out their life threatening function or reproduce. They cannot synthesize proteins because they lack ribosome and must use the ribosome of their host cell to translate viral messenger RNA into viral protein. Viruses cannot generate or store energy in the form of adenosine phosphate, which is ATP, but have to derive their energy and all other metabolic functions from the host cell. They also parasitize the cell for basic building material such as amino acid, nucleotides, and lipids, which viruses are generally classified by the organism they infect animal, the plants, or bacteria. These viruses cannot penetrate plant cell wall, where truly all plants viruses are transmitted by insects or other organisms that feed on plants. Certain bacterial viruses, such as the T4 bacterial fish, have evolved an elaborate process of infections. The, viruses, the virus has a tail, which is which is attached to the bacterium surface by means of proteinaceous pins. The tail contract and the tail plug penetrate the cell wall and underlying membrane injecting the viral nucleic acid into the cell. Viruses are further classified into families and general based on three structural considerations. So, uh, the first one is the type and size of the nucleic acid. Secondly, the size and shape of the capsid. And the thirdly, whether they have a lipid envelope surrounding the nucleic acid, which is the type capsid, the capsid includes nucleic acid. The next one is parasitic nature of virus. So as obligate intracellular parasites, viruses cannot replicate outside a living cell like prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. Viruses have genetic material, whereas a cell is capable of copying its own genetic material in order to reproduce. A virus cannot duplicate its genetic material or any of its other components on its own. For a virus to reproduce, it must infect a living cell. Once it's inside a living cell, the virus hijack the cell protein synthesis machinery to replicate the nucleic acid and other parts of virus. Cells infected by some viruses are killed or damaged by the replicating virus, causing the symptoms associated with viral infections. For example, cell infected by adenovirus in the respiratory tract and lies when viral replication is complete, leading to condition of such as Bronchitis. The new coronavirus is respiratory virus which spread primarily through droplets that uh, generate when an infected person coughs or sneezes uh, or even through droplet of a saliva or uh, discharge uh, from nose. So let us dive more about the coronavirus. Yes, yeah, so we already know about the structure and the history of the virus. 
So let's move to the main topic today that will be presented by Edlin entitled Coronavirus. Let's go. Kes kematian harian akibat COVID-19 melonjak kepada 126 kes jumlah tertinggi sejak virus Kementerian itu dikesan di negara ini telah terkelas di Jumat What is coronavirus? Coronavirus are family of virus that cause illness in humans and animals. Seven different types have been found in people including those responsible for the SARS, MERS and COVID-19. On 31st December 2019, WHO was informed a cases of pneumonia was unknown causes in Wuhan City, China. A novel coronavirus was identified as the cause by Chinese authority on 7 January 2020 and was temporarily named 2019 NCOV. Coronavirus COV are the large virus that cause illness ranging from the common cold to most severe disease. A novel coronavirus and COVID is a new strain that has not been previously identified in human. The new virus was subsequently named COVID-19 virus. COVID-19 is the new member of SARS-CoV-2 family. It is a new coronavirus that causes disease with the other symptoms such as flu, fever and cough. Coronavirus contains genetic blueprint called RNA similar to DNA. RNA is a single-stranded genetic blueprint as as a molecular message which enable a production of other elements of virus. The new SARS-CoV-2 is more closely related to a group SARS-CoV-2 found in human, bats, pangolin, and civet. Even though there are many similarities between the new COVID-19 and the virus that caused the SARS epidemic, there are also differences resulting from changes in their genomes. This include how they pass from one individual to another and the different system of coronaviruses. Early reports suggest that the new coronavirus is more contagious than the virus that caused SARS but less likely to cause severe disease. Seven human coronaviruses has been identified. Four of them are common, less high risk and typically cause only mild respiratory illness in healthy human adults. However, they are contribute to a third common cold infection and the in higher risk people with a weak immune system. They can cause long-term tra- life-threatening illness. The other three are known to cause more severe illness such as shortness of breath and even death. Now we already know about the coronavirus. So I think that's all from me today. Thanks to the students from lecture 9 who have presented a very interesting video. I hope I can see you guys again. Assalamualaikum and thank you guys.